the first example where in Universal Reporter we will make a comparison between uh, two revisions of PID. So on the left side you see equipment from revision 1. On the right side you see equipment from revision 2. And they have, um, of course, item tags and uh, other attributes like name, diameter, uh, differential pressure, etc. So we are going to compare the equipment from one revision to the other revision. We can eventually change also the names uh, of the monikers so that uh, they really match with R2 and R1. We can also select a slightly different color so that it's easier to see it in the interface. And for the combination of the tables, we will use a link which is um, using the equipment item tag as a common attribute. We are going to choose uh, an outer join so that we can also see if something was added or deleted. So the first result that we get is a comparison window which displays the data from both sides. And in here it is possible to choose a function which puts all attributes together that go together so that you see the item tag near the item tag, the name near the name. And in this window it is possible to use uh, functions like compare differences with the other column. So uh, then you can see, yeah, there's a difference in here. You can uh, clear the column filter and maybe check for other differences. But instead of manually looking for those differences, it is possible to use um, a very powerful auto-compare function, which can show only the different rows or the complete data set. If we decide to see only the different rows, you can see in this window that um, an attribute is generated, which is displaying um, the differences for the same item tags, color-coded but also it is possible to see what is available in revision 1 or what is only available in revision 2. So uh, with this result, um, you really have a change list report, which means you can export it to Excel. And then you will also have a possibility to use it and eventually uh, work on the data uh, identify uh, any missing data or update data using the other side as an update criteria. So this was the first example. I'm going to close these tables. And the next example will show a comparison, but in this case it will not be between PID um, and PID. In this case it will be between Excel and PID. So I'm going to show now a comparison between a line list. The line list has key, a key attribute, which looks like the item tag for the pipelines from PID. It has a revision field and it has uh, other attributes. And I have used the Excel report adapter to extract this line list into an MDB file. And we are going to compare this MDB file with uh, data coming from PID. So um, in this data set, we have data coming from PID. And we are going to compare these two files. So again, we put the window next to each other and align them. You see on this side the Excel data. You see on this side the PID data. We are dragging the PID table and drop it on the Excel table. And we choose um, the link. We choose the outer join because we want to see the maximum um, item tags. And the multi-window in this case will show in the blue color attributes coming from PID, in the pink color 
attributes coming from Excel, we can again put the columns together. We can again use the compare function within the multi-window, as I have shown in the other example. And of course, we have the possibility to create the different lists. And in this case, you will see that there is data which is available in both applications, but there is also data available only in PID. We can again uh, generate a report which extracts this in color codes and prints it to Excel. And um, there is a function going one step further. So for instance, if we want to take the 6 bar and the 100 Fahrenheit and apply it from the Excel values to the PID values, it is possible to select a row or also more than one row and to say that you want to assign the master tag in this case to Excel. So I will also do it uh, to the sep second row. And then I have two rows where Excel is assigned as a master tag. And there is an update function in Universal Reporter, which now is going to update the Excel values into the PID window. So if we go to the original PID window, we can um, use a change status column to query for the updated rows. And the number of rows in PID doesn't have to really be the same like you have seen in the rule comparison, because, because it might go to different nominal diameters uh, and so on. And this data set, which now displays the blue color, can be used to update the changes to SmartTan PID so that uh, the Excel report is really used in a dynamic way um, to, to modify PID columns. But it could also work the other way around. You could use uh, the PID columns and just uh, add values and change values in the Excel line list, which is an external document. So this was the first part of the presentation. And any questions that you have, um, please let us know. And we will, uh, of course, get back to you to answer them. The next part of the presentation will cover the quality assurance module, which you can use to make detailed quality checks on single application uh, data. So in my case, I have opened a PID ex uh, data set. So this is a, a set uh, that was extracted from SmartPlan PID. And in here, I have the possibility to see the different tables. I have the possibility to create my own views. So for instance, this is a view equipment 2, which displays a couple of attributes from the equipment table from PID. You have functions in here that allow you to choose which columns you want to see. You can also drag the columns to a new position if you want. And you can save the view again. And um, the, the real interesting feature in the quality assurance module is that you have the possibility to create rules. So for instance, if I want to see if the equipment name attribute is null, of course I could use a filter directly in the interface. But it is much nicer to use a pre-configured check rule. So if I apply this rule to the interface, you see that the yellow color is applied to the equipment name. You also get a tooltip if you go with your mouse on top of the column. And the tooltip shows the rule name and the rule description. So if I just open the rule, you can here see the name, the description, the criteria, which uh, can be defined in a visual interface. And uh, here is the place where you can set the style, eventually also the font for what needs to be displayed in the grid, and where you can also choose um, for which column do you want to apply this style. So I'm going to apply uh, another rule, a rule which checks if equipment ends with three numbers. And now we have uh, rows where both of these rules apply. 
And one feature of the quality assurance module is that it allows you to export this result to Excel. And the Excel file will also uh, have the colors applied. And it will display a first sheet containing the data and a second sheet containing uh, a legend for the style so that uh, you know that the green color means equipment without uh, sorry, the green color means equipment ending with three numbers. The yellow color means equipment that has a blank or null name. Uh, of course, exactly the same principle is also possible for piping data. So if we would switch to a piping view and we will just go here lower in the list on the left side, you see there are lots of uh, rules also for piping. You can apply them only as a style, but of course you could also apply them as a filter. So in this case, I have a rule which checks if an I or an O was used in the sequence number field. So we found here this, this one row, which is really not, uh, not matching with the requirements. And um, we could um, export this one as well to Excel or apply some other filters. And what we can also do from the quality assurance module, if something is not OK, we can say that we want to see this object in graphics. There are three functions uh, available for the graphical part. One of them would just open Smart Sketch and show you the object. So it will look on, on the complete set of files. It will find the right file it will open the file and it will highlight the object in graphics. So this is the highlight function, which is searching for the object that you have selected and highlights it in graphics. The next function is pretty much the same, except that it gives you the possibility to also create a PDF for uh, the data and highlight it in a PDF. So I can, I can uh, choose an output folder and I can say that I want to put this maybe on projects and here. I can open the folder and use the export function. So right now it is not only um, highlighting it in, in Smart Sketch, it is also generating a file where this data is visible in the highlight color, which is the red color. By the way, it can also be changed. And the last example which I want to show is um, if a rule is applied, it is also possible to say that we want to have the rule as a comment in the PDF. So I'm taking the same object, but I'm exporting it with comments. I'm also using the height inconsistency uh, function. So we are going to do the same. But in this case, the object is not highlighted. Like in the previous example, the object uh, gets a, a markup, which is a comment in the PDF file. And this means if we go a little closer down here, you see that it doesn't have any more the highlight color but there was a comment created in the PDF, which uh, if I click on it, I can also highlight it, and it tells which object is um, not valid in this case, and the rule with the description item tag ends with three numbers is also visible in the comment. And of course, if the user would choose uh, more than one object or eventually uh, the complete data set, then uh, all the drawings will be exported with the comments into PDF files. Yes, well, um, thanks a lot for your attention. And as I already said, um, any questions that you might have, please let us know. Goodbye. Thank you.